Hi, welcome to educators.com. Shravanti here, Hadoop instructor. In this module, we are going to discuss hardware requirements for master machine and hardware requirements for slave machines, which are data nodes. And what are the different types of installation modes available for Hadoop? And finally, the default virtual machines for our quick testing. Hardware requirements for master node. That means our main node. So here we will be having this machines, the master machines are either 2 to 3 per cluster. That means Suppose if you are setting up a high availability of the cluster, in that case, instead of a single main node, you will be purchasing another machine called a standby main node as well with this the requirements, configurations. That is the reason why it can be either two or three means if you are using the H base, even you can have a H master. That is also another master machine. That is the reason why you can have a 2 to 3 per cluster these master nodes are. And these master machines have to be a carrier class hardware machines. That is nothing more. When we discuss our Hadoop, we keep on talking about the commodity hardware machine. That is mainly for your slaves. That is for data nodes. But especially for the master nodes, it has to be a carrier class hardware. That means a powerful machine we must need to choose. And when it comes to the cost, each master machine costs $10,000 to the $20,000. And in terms of the RAM, we must need to choose a powerful RAM because as for our architecture, all of your metadata information is going to be stored as part of your main memory. That is the reason why we have to choose at least the 64 to 128 gigabytes of the RAM. Even it's based upon the scenario, even we will be choosing the more RAM as well. When it comes to the disk space, as we are not storing any of the blocks in your main node, in the master machines, that is the reason why you can simply take a 4 terabytes of the hard disk is fine, 4 to 5 terabytes of the hard disk is pretty fine. It is useful to store your uh, uh, the uh, edit logs information and also even your log files and such kind of the things can be used to store this 4 to 6 terabytes of the data space. But when it compares with our slave machine hardware requirements, the slave machine hardware requirements are commodity class hardware that is a cheaper hardware you can purchase. So the cost if you see it is a thousand dollars to the three thousand dollars per each of the machine. And you can have any number of the slave machines. In the older machines, older versions of the Hadoop, there is a limitation of four thousand nodes. In case if we are having more than four thousand of the slave machines, we used to see the performance issues. But in the latest version there is no limitation of your slave number of slave nodes. And in terms of the RAM, your main node requires more RAM when it compares to the slaves. So even here also to running any of your tasks in the slave machine, even you require the RAM. But the major thing what you need to consider for your slave machines that are the data nodes are nothing but the disk space because all your blocks are going to be stored as part of your data nodes. So that is the reason why we must need to choose a huge amount of the disk space as part of your uh, data nodes. So the minimum requirement will be you can choose any number from the 12 to 24 individual disks and each of the machine disk size will be from 1 terabytes to 4 terabytes. Suppose if I choose the 3 terabytes of the individual disk, if I choose the 16 disks, 16 into 3, that means each of the data nodes can be capable of storing 48 terabytes of the data. 
Hadoop installation modes. So we have three types of installation modes in Hadoop. Standalone mode, pseudo distributed mode, and fully distributed mode. The standalone mode is nothing but the default mode in the Hadoop. In this mode, you will it will not be used any of the HDFS. It simply uses your local file system itself. Nothing is going to be stored as part of your Hadoop distributed file system. It's mainly if you wanted to debug something, you have written the code and if you wanted to debug without the HDFS, then you can use this particular standalone mode. Here, we will not be modifying any of the configuration files related to the Hadoop. Directly you can download and you can update your uh, environment variables. That's it. You need not even update any of the XML files. Here going forward you will be understanding. We do have some specific XML files called HDFS site.xml, mapred site.xml, core site.xml, yarn site.xml. These are the four important XML files which we will be modifying for our Hadoop configurations. But as part of your standalone mode, we need not modify any other configuration files because here we are not even using our HDFS. So simply we are using our local file system. The next one is the pseudo distributed mode. So as part of the pseudo distributed mode, all the daemons like your data node, main node, and we have some other two demons like a job tracker or the task tracker or resource manager or the node manager. These two additional demons which we will be discussing as part of the map reviews. So in simple words, in the pseudo distributed mode, all the demons will be available and running in the single machine itself. When I say the single machine, obviously the replication factor is also one itself. And mainly you can see such kind of the setup, pseudo distributed mode setup as part of your training environment and uh, any test environments, even small development environments also you can see such kind of the distributed mode. And as part of this, we will be updating the configuration files, core site, HDFS site, MapRed site, and also there is something called a YARN site. All of these things you will be updating. And here, fully distributed. So this is the final production cluster. As part of the fully distributed mode, whatever the processes we are talking about, the main node, data node, and rest of the map reduce processes, each and everything will be available as part of your different, different machines. That means you will be having a multiple machines distributed over the network and you will be using one machine as a main node, one machine as a data node, another machine as another data node. Like that, you will be using the different nodes. As it looks similar to your production clusters and even the pre prod clusters as well. Default virtual machine for quick testing. The previous sessions we talk about the Hadoop distributions, the popular distributions are the Cloud Era, Hortonworks. So what these distributions does is they give us a sample virtual box wherein the Hadoop is already installed. Even your all ecosystem components called a Hive, Gig, Scope, Hume, each and every ecosystem component is also already installed as part of these virtual machines. You can simply download these virtual machines and you can use it for your testing purpose. Like if you wanted to write some MapReduce code or you wanted to write some HDFS command, without setting up your Hadoop, you can directly use this particular Cloudera Quick Start VM or a Hortonworks Sandbox. These are the most widely used uh, distributions and these are the Quick Start VMs. In the next module, I'll be showing you how to install this Cloudera Quick Start VM so that 
we can start practicing our HDFS commands and how to place these files, how to write it, read it, all these things. In this module, we discussed about the configurations and the hardware requirements for our uh, master nodes and also the slave nodes. We understand that the master nodes main node must require you a lot of RAM because the metadata stores there. And the data node requires a huge amount of the disk space because all your blocks are going to be stored there. And we understand that the data node machines can be your commodity hardware. And also we talk about um, the different types of the installation modes. The standalone installation mode is test anything without the HDFS. Mainly if you wanted to test your code for the debugging purpose with the local file system, you can use that. And pseudo distributed mode. All the processes will be in the same machine like the data node, main node, either resource manager or the job tracker, node manager or the task tracker, everything in the single machine. In the fully distributed mode, this is the production cluster wherein each of the processes will be in the different machines, distributed manner. And also we have seen the different types of the virtual machines like a Cloudera, Kitsa, VM or the Hartenwood sandbox for your quick testing. Thank you. Let's catch up in the next module.